It shows the young Phaeton plunging to his death after recklessly driving the chariot of the sun across the sky. The drawing is inscribed at the bottom with a message to Tommaso, saying, Tommaso, if you don't like this drawing, let Urbino, my servant, know, and I'll do you another one, as promised, tomorrow evening. If you do like it, tell Urbino, and I will work this one up. And I think what you're looking at here is Michelangelo's own view of his relationship with Tommaso. Just as Phaeton tried to do something beyond his reach, Michelangelo is, I think, suggesting that his love for Tommaso is a love beyond his reach. This is a wonderfully direct, intimate insight into the private heart of Michelangelo in the 1530s and into that consuming passion that would dominate his life for many, many years. Michelangelo's passionate response to the beauty of the male body was matched by an equally intensely felt Christian faith. And it's the sometimes conflicting pull of these two impulses, the physical and the spiritual, that is one of the driving forces of his art. This is well illustrated by a visionary drawing in the British Museum from the early 1530s of Christ's resurrection from the tomb before a group of terrified soldiers. Christ's risen body is at once weightless and ethereal. Yet at the same time, it's solid and three-dimensional. Michelangelo seems to be showing Christ caught in a no-man's land between his earthly human form and the divine spiritual one that he will revert to when he ascends to heaven. The sense that reality is being warped by this momentous event is underlined by the difference in scale between Christ and the scattering soldiers, a reversion to the pictorial conventions of medieval art, where the significance of a figure is conveyed by its relative size in the composition. The artist's highly original concept of Christ's resurrected form is just one example of his response to the notion of the risen, altered body. There's a theological issue raised by the resurrection drawing. How do our bodies after death differ from our earthly ones? This was central to the most significant painting commission of the final part of Michelangelo's life, the Last Judgment. The end of the world is, according to Christian belief, the moment when all humanity will rise from the dead and be judged by divine justice, either going to heaven or to hell. The Catholic Michelangelo earnestly believed in the reality of heaven and hell, and his fresco shows in graphic detail the horrible fate awaiting those who ended up on the wrong side of this spiritual divide. This deeply religious subject required Michelangelo to find a new way of representing the human body, one stripped of the sensual beauty that is so powerful in the figures on the ceiling. Interestingly, there is no difference between the bodies of the saved and those of the damned. Only in one or two of the waking souls do we find an echo of Michelangelo's old celebration of the body's beauty. The drawings show Michelangelo working out how to cope with massed and tangled bodies. And he's also testing the limits of what he can portray through the body. The violence, brutality even, is shocking. In the drawing showing the angels repelling damned souls, Michelangelo has a violent angel clubbing a soul and a condemned sinner being dragged down to hell by his testicles. We are indeed a long way from the supremely positive moment of God's creation of Adam in his own divine image. The Last Judgment marks Michelangelo's rejection of the sensual and his turning to become increasingly aware of his own mortality. Certain of death, but not yet of its hour, he wrote, I know that life is short and little of it left for me. His crucifixion drawings, made towards the end of his long life, explore his conflicting feelings of hope and dread as he approached death. The, the late crucifixion drawings, for me, are the most extraordinary meditation on being and nothingness. All that mastery, 
that was demonstrated in the Medici tombs in, in the Sistine Chapel in a way disappears and he, he goes to this place of meditation in which existence and non-existence coexist. These two drawings, made when Michelangelo was well into his 80s, in the 1560s, are, I think, his own meditations on his imminent death and on his need for redemption. As far as we can tell, these were not done for any public commission. They're private thoughts about the death of Christ and the impact of the death of Christ on the believer. Michelangelo, always devout, now needs to focus ever more closely on what that act of redemption actually meant and meant above all to him. In the left-hand drawing, Christ hangs on a cross used especially by penitents. This is the Christ of those who repent and who are therefore open to that promise of salvation. And at the bottom, the figures of the Virgin and John the Evangelist expressing emotions about Christ's death, about death, I think, in general. John, on the right as we look at it, horror-struck. Michelangelo working and reworking that figure as he tries to get different emotions of John watching the death of the person he loves. And on the other side, the Virgin, where Michelangelo has used white to block out earlier drawings, earlier lines, to bring in new ideas about the mother looking at the dying son. Using the gesture of the arms crossed, hugging herself in grief, but also referring to that moment at the Annunciation where she crosses her arms in acceptance of the will of God. A wonderfully ambiguous reading of the emotion of horror and acceptance. And it's the same on the other drawing. The Virgin and John both touching the dead body, hanging on to Christ, reluctant to let him go. The physical separation of death being part of the horror of the experience. These very personal views of what Christ's death, of what his own death might mean, are executed by a man whose sight is obviously no longer what it was, who clearly now finds it harder to control the pencil and the chalk, whose physical powers are failing as the need to express intensity grows. We are very close to Michelangelo's deepest concerns, and we're at the end of what has been a remarkable journey of a soul of an artist, of a hand, of a talent. And if we compare these drawings of the 1560s with the Adam made nearly half a century before, we can see, I think, how far Michelangelo has traveled. The Adam is the body of a young, vigorous man drawn by a young, vigorous man. The perfect body made by God, put by God immediately on earth. The Christ at the end is the body that the earth gives back to God. The broken body, the disintegrating body, the body that's reluctant to leave the earth. The final statement of Michelangelo of what the male body can say about the human condition.